Wave Healer Nation, what is going on? Welcome back. Man, it's been a while. Um, I've been busy. We've been busy. Uh, we've been up to a lot of amazing things. I recently just finished yoga teacher training uh, through Raw Yoga Studios. I am now a certified yoga instructor. Uh, and I'm sitting beside one of my good friends who is also a certified yoga instructor who was right there in the trenches beside me from day one uh, when we started back in January. And she is here to share her experience um, this happened very intuitively. Uh, we were sitting down at lunch. Um, I think it was right after I taught my final. And we were just sitting outside eating, and I just felt called to ask her to come on the show. And now here she is. So, uh, Wave Healer Nation, Tsunami Healing, please welcome uh, Cami Winterberg. Cami, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> what a journey we just had. <laughs> Um, Whirlwind. It's we're we're a week after our graduation. Yes. Uh, we're both still kind of coming down from it, mm -hmm. uh, getting grounded. Um, I think everybody kind of feels that way, as one does coming out of a yoga teacher training. Um, but we've got a lot to talk about, so we'll just get straight into it. So, um, Cami, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you got into yoga. Yeah, um, I am from Costa Mesa, California small uh, city in Orange County. Um, yeah, I'm definitely a local to the area. That's where Ra is. I believe mm -hmm. that's where Ra actually first started, yeah. was in Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the first yoga studio that I ever visited was the Costa Mesa Ra. Okay. It was actually in, I want to say 2019. So pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I had never done yoga before. I was actually someone that was skeptical about yoga, believe it or not. I don't know if I've ever no, told you that. This, this is good to know. All right, we're getting yeah, into it. Yeah, uh, one of my best friends, Monique, she lived right down the street from the Costa Mesa Ra. And one night she was like, hey, uh, you should come out and do some yoga with me. And I was like, I don't have time for that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I was actually in a place in my life where I was experiencing major anxiety for the first time. I had moved out and I was living in a situation that wasn't very healthy. Um, so I just said, hey, I, I need to get out of here anyways. Like, let's go do this yoga thing. Um, and we walked, because again, she lived right around the corner. So we walked there and the second you walk into Ra, it's like this energy just takes over, as you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it was one of the most life-changing experiences of my life. I walked out of that class with no anxiety. I felt so light and renewed. And I want to say just a few days after that, I decided to leave that living situation I was in, mm -hmm. go to a more healthy environment, and I continued on yoga from there. Um, so yeah, just a fun fact that Ra did that for me. So Do you remember yeah. whose class you took? You know, I don't. Okay. It was so that was long a while ago. ago yeah. yeah. But she did amazing. It was I wanna say candle it, probably fake candles, but <laughs> <laughs> it was a very dark setting. For safety um, purposes. Right, yeah. for safety purposes. Yeah. Definitely a fake candle. But oh my gosh, I loved child's pose. <laughs> Everything about it. Oh, still my favorite to this day. But mm -hmm. yeah, definitely changed my life and here I am. No, yoga so, teacher. Real quick, before we get any deeper, um, shout out to our rock star yoga sister Asha. Um, Asha, yes. if you are out there listening, uh, we are currently <laughs> sipping on uh, the wine that was gifted to us called Uno. Mm -hmm. It's a my blanc, and it tastes delicious. delicious. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, my so, friend, my beautiful you, friend. Uh, cheers to you. We're enjoying. For cheers. Um, Cami, with that, uh, what made you decide you wanted to go into teacher training? Right. Um, so. Another story. Mm -hmm. I was visiting a friend of mine who lives up in Washington. Shout out to Felicia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, love her. I was going through a pretty difficult time period in my life. Um, this would be about five months ago, I want to say. Beginning of November yeah. 2023. Okay. And I was just sitting on her bed. Um, rainy day, kind of like today. <laughs> Full circle. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um and I got this email from Raw, and it said, oh, do you want to work on your 
public speech? Do you want to make connections? You know, join a community? And I was like, oh, this is very enticing. Um, and I thought about it, and I could not shut up about it for the rest of my trip. I was there for like five days. And yeah, I think the Q&A was about a week later. Not even that, just a few days later, and I showed up. Um, and it was actually me and Asha uh-huh. and Jake. Yeah, yeah. And Lori. Mm-hmm. Love Lori and Jake um, and Asha. Um, yeah, and I was like, I'm doing this. It just seemed right. I had a gut feeling. And yeah, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. I love that. Yeah. Um, multiple part question here. We'll take it in stride. Yeah. But just to introduce you to it. Um, what were your expectations going into teacher training versus where you are now? Oh. And then kind of what did you want to get out of it? Did you feel like you got out of it what you wanted to get out of it? Oh. I know. Multi-part. Ooh. So we'll yes. start with what were your expectations going in? My expectations were I was going to learn how to use my speech. Because mm-hmm. I do, as I was telling you, just have some problems with speaking in front of large groups of people. I just think... Throughout my whole life, I was always kind of in a corner and told to just keep quiet. I guess in a way made to feel like my voice didn't matter. Yeah. And I just took that with me my whole life. Um, I'll be 28 this year, so I'm glad that I'm finally (laughs) changing it now Mm -hmm. before it's too late. I guess it's never really too late, but... Uh, Anywho, yeah, I thought it would help with my speech a little bit, um... And I thought I would make some new friends and just learn a new skill. In no way was I expecting to take from it what I did. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined anything that happened would happen. Um, What was the second question again? Um, Uh, Where are you at now? Where am I at now? Whew. Just taking it all in. Um, Really just looking back, ruminating on the whole experience, very bittersweet, you know, it's very gratifying to come out of the experience knowing that, you know, we worked that hard for so long and we learned so much, but we also sacrificed so much. We did. And I'm just really allowing myself to breathe. And just think about my life and think about my options, which is something I was not able to do before. I was very stuck and I had, I don't want to say one way of thinking, but I didn't see all of the opportunity before that I'm now able to see because of this experience. Mm -hmm. It's like my whole life is painted in color now Mm. versus black and white. Yeah, I like that. That's like (laughs) the best way I can describe it. It's just like life is so beautiful and... Without all of you guys, I never would have had that. So I'm just so grateful for everybody and for the experience. I hope that that answers the question. Yeah, Um, for sure. (laughs) Uh, Kind of on that same note, what did you want to get out of teacher training? Did you feel like you got it? Um, Yes. I wanted to find community, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to work on my public speaking skills. Mm -hmm. I definitely found that. I think I definitely haven't mastered the public speaking yet, um, but... It's stepping stones, baby steps, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The door has been opened. So hopefully in my future, I can look back at whatever I'm doing at the time, hopefully something with public speaking, and just think like, wow, we started here and now we're here. Um, yeah. So I definitely got it started and I found the best community. I could never imagine that I could love this giant group of people. <laughs> I. Uh, there's probably like in total 27 of us, right? Yeah. Like with the assistants and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, my God, just the love that emulates off of everybody for one another. I never thought that that was something I could experience. Yeah. And yeah, I just think we were all meant to find one another. So I did get what I wanted out of it and more, way more. Yeah. So happy. Um. So, with all of that, what's next for you, Cammy? Do you want to be a teacher? Do you feel like you want to develop your personal practice? Are you going into 300? Are you taking a break? What's next? Right. Um, right now, I just want to continue on with my own practice and 
I know I'll never be perfect, but I definitely want to go to some more classes, learn from those teachers, you know, network a little bit more, meet some people. And this summer I want to start on my community project. Mm -hmm. I think I want to do some classes out on the beach, maybe at some of the parks out here, and just, you know, ask whoever to come out and just show up to have a good time and to just relax a little bit. So that's what's on my radar. I don't know that I'm going to do the 300 hour yet. I definitely want to do yin training mm -hmm. and that'll probably be next year because I believe that's every February or March. But yeah, I think the more I practice and now that I'm out of the training um, area and I can just step into a classroom and see oh maybe this is for me maybe that's for me and just kind of feel it out because I'm not really too sure yet mm -hmm. my brain has just been buzzing for the last few months so I'm just gonna let it quiet down a little bit and go where my heart takes me we'll see definitely yeah. yin though yeah yes. I love that I love that I love that I'm attracting yin teachers because I came into this training I just want to be a yin teacher and they're like nah you gotta do vinyasa and I was like all right We'll do it. And now the more I'm talking to people, like I know Taya wants to be a UN teacher here that you do. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Man. Me um, too. That's crazy. So uh, along with that, Cammy, um, <clears throat> you talk a lot about public speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I see you as a very powerful speaker, even though Thank that's you. not necessarily how you <laughs> uh, initially viewed yourself. So. Um, we don't have to get into the specifics of it, but I just wanted to raise the point that you had a really powerful share to the group. I think it was around like week four or five, and I felt like we just saw you open up. And all the walls came down. <laughs> and I felt like from there, um, I started having some powerful shares, and I started feeling more and more connected to you. And I think we had a moment, uh, I don't know, it's like weeks blend together, but I think it was around like seven or eight. It was when, because... I had a really tough weekend on week seven. Um, and you came up to me and you were like, I get it. Like, we're, I'm here for you. Um, and, and from there, I think the thing that, like, solidified it was when um, we went on a, we took a special trip and you guys were in the car with me. Um, yes. And we had a really <laughs> fun group. There was uh, Badass Betty with us. There was <laughs> our rock star yoga sister, Asha, and... You were in the car with it, and, and we had a great time. We that did. Was that was the best. Yeah. So, I don't know. Tell me, tell me. I mean, that was kind of my perspective. Tell me your perspective and, like, how that felt for you. Um, just going through that whole entire experience from, like, having that powerful share to graduation. Oh, my gosh. My whole life is different. Yeah. My lens on the world is different. Mm -hmm. Like I said, everything's in color now, where mm -hmm. it was black and white. And that was because I was able to be cracked open, yeah. just to put it in short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I always thought I was a vulnerable person. And the experience from the very first day made me realize I was so closed off. And I had a lot of work to do. Yeah. And I had some existing problems with people in my life, um, like my family, for example, that were and have always sort of clouded my judgment and my view of myself and this experience was the first time in my life when I was able to see myself and have compassion for myself and for those people as well who have hurt me yeah. and I feel like that alone is just such a big step yeah. and um, I was able to sit with my feelings with my trauma my sadness my anger and just let it flow in and out mm -hmm. and it was hard yeah. especially having to talk about my personal experiences in life but it was very cathartic at the same time and it gave me a power to talk about it and I think a lot of people are afraid to talk about what has made them who they are if they even know that yeah. you know what they've been through is what made them who they are but um yeah, I just kind of losing my train of thought, but <laughs> I'll pull you back so many again, thoughts. Maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, I found myself coming home and just feeling so much lighter. Yeah, and I only shared a few times, but we all had something to relate to, yeah. and I think that was the craziest part. Um, 
you walk into a room thinking, oh, I'm, I'm alone. No one will get this. But we all understood one another. Yeah. Even if we didn't experience that firsthand, mm-hmm. you could just feel the energy, the empathy, the love in the room. Mm-hmm. And that's not something that you get everywhere that you go. Yeah. It becomes addicting in a way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you want to keep going back and showing up. And I never wanted to miss a day. I mean, it's very time consuming showing up every single weekend for 12 weeks and that's not something I ever thought I could do while also working a full-time job um but I did it because I just couldn't get enough it was a blessing and I'm forever grateful for the entire experience yeah just to speak on that a little bit my friend Natalie that came to my final um she was my uh yoga teacher at UFC in high Um, for a little bit and she did her yoga training out of Mexico she went on vacation with her mom (laughs) and they came back 17 days later both of them certified yoga instructors and she was telling me (laughs) that when she came out of that um, there's so much love she felt so much love in her cohort and she said uh, not to speak to her experience or speak for her but that wasn't necessarily something that was focused on in her training and um, I'm very grateful to have went through raw yoga to really build that community because it's strong it's yeah. there I know oh, all you sure. guys are listening shout out to everybody yes. in the <laughs> um, so uh, I feel like they're here with us right now too and, um, they always um, will be they, exactly Yeah. exactly and I feel like I'm excited to see all of us grow and like continue to connect and um, I mean obviously we're here now you said yes we're here but yeah this is like you said you met new friends and I, and I was so excited and happy we've been talking about this all week yeah I know um, ah, so I can't to, believe it's finally here I can't believe we're here I know on a it's, Saturday it's, it's like hard to yes conceptualize that Normally, we're not in that room I was gonna say we'd be in that room <laughs> yeah five minutes let's get back yeah uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah so <sighs> it, it's powerful but um Kami I want to draw it back here uh tell us who is Kami Oh. Who was Cami on January 22nd, the day we came in, and who is Cami today? Oh. How have you changed? I was, not to be dramatic, but <laughs> I was a lost, sad person. Mm-hmm. I had no idea where my life was going. Mm-hmm. I had no idea who had my back mm-hmm. and, you know, who didn't. Yeah. I didn't know who to trust. I didn't trust myself. Mm-hmm. Just lost. It's the only word I can really think of. Just looking for some meaning to my life. Mm-hmm. Just after life had just been throwing me blows left and right. Yeah. <laughs> and I just wanted something to wake up and go to. And I got more than that. Yeah. But I think I was stuck in a box where... I was like, oh, I need to have a good job, a good nine to five, and that will define me. Mm. And now I realize that my job is just a way to help me survive. It's not who I am. Mm -hmm. I can't tie my identity to my work. And I hope in the future that I'm able to still be doing yoga. I would like to keep growing in this space. I want to help other people. I've always been someone that wants to be of service. it brings me gratitude. I love helping. I just want to make people's lives feel better. And I think in a way, that's because I don't have someone doing that for me. Mm. So I've learned to kind of give myself that love and attention that I need. Pouring into myself so that I can't give back to others. And I wouldn't be able to do that without this experience. Um, now I'm just really looking forward to all of the paths that have opened for me because I know I can do so much yeah. and that I am a powerful person. So I'm just excited to see what's next for myself. I don't even know. I definitely want to go more towards a career path that focuses on service, creativity, and yeah. I'm just kind of patiently waiting for the universe to bring that to me. I'm not going to try too hard Mm -hmm. because that's where things get chaotic. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, So we can process this together so we can look back. 
Um, any memorable moments from teacher training that stand out for you? I know it's a big question. So, oh, my God. Um, maybe, like, this week was fun or this moment happened. And maybe if you feel called, maybe share some of the uncomfortable moments Yeah. that taught you or, like, gave you a different perspective. So anything yeah. stand out to you? Week four, <laughs> heart chakra. <laughs> mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> big one. <laughs> <laughs> I left that night in tears in my car. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me to cry in front of people. Yeah. I was doing that more towards the end especially in finals. I was bawling, but... I think we all were, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, cracked wide open, mm -hmm. for sure. But I remember that was the week I think I shared about my family. Um, yeah. I love my family. They're listening to this. Yeah. But, of course, it comes with pain. Yeah. And that was a hard share for me. And I can't even remember what I had said specifically. Not that that's super important, but... I just got into my car and bawled my eyes out, and it was so cathartic for me. I just felt so much lighter for finally being able to talk about something that weighs so heavily on me. Mm -hmm. um, that stands out. But just ugh, all the sacred circles were so special. Um, I think especially our last day together, graduation, that ceremony that we had. I don't know if there was a certain word for that. Um, <laughs> it was something. It was quite the experience. Yeah. I think that will stand out the most for me. I mean, everything does. Our trip to the monastery, that was very special. Um, that made me feel very connected to myself and to everybody else as well. I don't yeah. know if you can relate to that. Absolutely. That was beautiful. We got to go back. Yeah. For sure. Um, but all the sacred circles, all the Mondays waking up, or Mondays, Saturdays waking up early, mm -hmm. doing yoga for 90 minutes, <laughs> yeah. all of it. I wish I could go back. But at the same time, I would like to leave it right where it's at yeah. and just remember. Mm -hmm. No, I totally feel that. And I think the words that come to mind for me thinking about our graduation ceremony are sacred. So, yeah. Holy yes uh, connected uh, in community I oh, mean I, I think yeah. it, I laugh because me and Liz talk about it we were so in the moment we forgot to take pictures together <laughs> like that's how yeah. connected we were we didn't even have our phones out yeah because it was Same. such a sacred holy moment that we just literally wanted to look each other in our eyes and say oh my god I love you we're here we did this yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know and I feel like you don't get that Oh, no. In the world. <laughs> not at all. Um, not like that. So, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah. It was a really beautiful ceremony. Yeah, and I cried driving home from that as well. I was like, oh, my God, yeah. this is the last time we're all going to be together yeah. in the same place. Mm -hmm. And that was a hard realization for me. Mm -hmm. Because you guys feel like my soul tribe. <laughs> you and know, like we the are, people yeah. that have just made such a difference in my life and have made me a better person. Mm -hmm. Um I'm just so grateful for every single one of you. Yeah. And I'm staring her in the eyes, telling her that, that I, I, I love you so much, Candy. I'm, I love I'm, you, I'm excited Justin. that we're doing this. I can't um, believe we're here now, and I was, we're just taking off to the next I know. part of our journey. Yeah, it's too crazy. That, um, the thing that's been helping me is I'm excited for the next chapter. Yeah. So, like, we got to know each other in the yoga room. I'm yeah. excited to get to know all of you outside of the yoga room. Mm -hmm. And that's the next chapter, right? Because yes. now it's like, okay nobody's going away right. we're going to see each other <laughs> we're a lot. all still here we're going to take a lot of pictures we're going to yeah. have a lot of more fun exciting moments yes and it just gets to look a little different now now we don't have to be in the room every day we need to be outside yeah now <laughs> so that makes we you have excited. the freedom to add our touch yes onto what we learned yeah and that's beautiful and i love that and i can't wait to see where everybody goes i mean mm -hmm. some people are already they're just Right yeah, into some it. people are, are mean, at 300 right now as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're here doing a podcast. I yeah. like that. Uh, some people are thinking about it, what they want to do next. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're all in different places, and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. It's just life is a trip. Right. <laughs> Life's crazy. It's beautiful. So... Um. Yeah. Doing uh, 
teacher training at Royal Yoga Studios, I'm sure that there was things that you loved, maybe some things you thought could have been different or better. Mm. Do you feel like was anything could have been different or better that you wish you could have got, but maybe you thought it was going to be a little bit different or anything to that sort? Honestly, I had no expectations. Yeah. So I, I can't say that I wish it was a certain way. I more walked in like, okay, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. And... As time went on, when we were learning what we should and shouldn't do, yeah, and I would take classes, and some teachers would do things like adjustments without, you know, asking permission. Mm-hmm. That now is a big red flag to me. Yeah. So I would start to see those things. It's like mm, I don't like that. Yeah. But I mean, yoga is art, and each teacher that walks through that door and teaches a class is, you know, presenting their art. And I, I really can't say I was disappointed in one situation and, you know, overly elated in another. It's, it's yeah. all just, I guess, how you experience it, what your perception is of it. Everyone's different. Mm-hmm. I just take things as they go. Mm-hmm. I've learned, I learned a long time ago, not to have expectations for anything. Mm-hmm. And I just take what I can out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, it does. And I've had this conversation with other people. Um, I know I like to talk about it with Eric. And I feel like there's a little practical things, right? Yeah. That, like, could have been or should have been or would have been. But it's like, I felt like everything was perfect the way it was. Right. And exactly. it happened the way it did. Because even the things that bothered me, I never spoke up and said anything about it. Right. I kept showing back up. Exactly. And it's like, if it really was a problem, I would have spoken and said something about it, but I didn't. Yeah. And I wanted more of it, more of it, right? Yeah, and there <laughs> so was that like, one teacher, right. Mike, um, I don't know if you might remember Olivia Cher about yeah. Mike. We, yeah, we were talking about this. He's so Liz's funny, he's great. Yeah. He did the same thing to me. I, I took his class, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm in YTT with Raw, and he was like, oh, great, give me some feedback. What did I do that was bad? And I was like, uh. <laughs> I was like, I what do you know. mean? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? This was such a great class. Yeah. And I had to really think deep. Like, I mean, I guess you could have done this differently. And I don't really like critiquing, but Lori pointed out to us once, like, this is how we grow. Mm-hmm. And it's how we help one another. Mm-hmm. So and maybe he's not doing what he did in that one class with me that one time anymore because I mentioned that to him. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's all very interesting. I think just everybody's lens on it is a little bit different. Um, I do especially think when you're just a regular student and you're not someone that's in training, uh, teacher training, you look at it like this is how it's supposed to be. Whereas when you're in a space where you're being taught how to become become a teacher and show up as a teacher, you can be a little more critical. Mm -hmm. Um, And you see that there are some people that definitely were not taught the same way as you were that can be less inclusive um and i did come across that sometimes but that's just life that's anywhere you go that's gonna happen Mm -hmm. and it's just what to expect and you just you know think of that person as someone on their own journey and learning themselves so there's no room for judgment really in my opinion no I, i totally agree and i think for me the biggest thing was like what I loved is that we were exposed to so many different things. Yeah. So quickly. Right. Um, I never thought about prenatal yoga. I never <laughs> thought right. about acro yoga. Yeah. And these are things that are like, man, I'm so glad I did that because I love it now. Oh, such and I a great go experience. And I want to do it. Yeah. You know? And I want to learn more about it. Like, mudras and bandhas. It's like, I had no bandhas. idea what any of that <laughs> stuff. And I connected with all of that so deeply. Yeah. That being said, it was very overwhelming. That was a lot of things oh, in 12 weeks. it was a lot like, jam-packed in our brains, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, I kind of wish I would have had more time to, like, yeah. dissect that and to, mm-hmm. like, go. But, but but now I can, right? Yeah, And it's like, exactly. it was what it was, and I got exposed, and now I can do with it what I want. It happened the way that it was supposed to happen. Exactly. That's how I always try to look at life. Yeah. Everything's happening for us, not to us, mm-hmm. exactly as it was supposed to. And yeah. that's very comforting to me. Mm-hmm. So, kind of like all of the pain, happiness, whatever it may be, that led up to this moment was supposed to happen to make me who I am today. Yeah. Everything we learned, 
in that fast period of time, that was how it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. But we still have all of our tools. We can look back and, yeah. you know. And while we're on this, too, I want to share this. This is a very personal, unsolicited share, so get ready. Okay. Because um, I want to hear I want to hear it from your perspective, okay. Kami. Um, I had a really difficult week, uh, week seven. That mm. was Crown Chakra Week. Mm. We are the Crown Chakra cohort, from what I understand. Yes. That's what we've been deemed. We're yeah. very <laughs> uh, analytical. We're very inquisitive. We're very in our heads. Um, yes, for sure. Which is great. So... It just so happened I got triggered on Crown Shocker Week. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't go into that thinking mm -hmm. that. I wanted to, leave, wanted to show up uh, for our sister Liz because she was teaching a lot that weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and I got triggered. <laughs> and she, you guys were all there for me. Um, it was tough because for me, I just wanted to leave. Yeah. I didn't want to be there anymore. And I know we've all felt that moment in time where we're at a, an event. Something happens and it's like, all right, screw this. I just want to leave. Yes. So <laughs> my perspective, and I, I and I was talking to Madison about this. I heard, I kept hearing his voice in the back of my head saying, "Just stay a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Just be there for your cohort. Yeah. Like, just you're gonna regret it if you leave. So just stay till the end of the day." And then I had this big, huge, powerful share. It was at the very last share of this last sacred yeah. circle. <laughs> so, remember. what was that like for you guys, Kim? Because for me, it was uncomfortable. But like, did you? notice or see anything in me or did you like what well, would well, like hearing that like were you like holy crap I think that that was a moment for you a very pivotal moment for you yeah. where everything was just building up mm -hmm. and it was kind of like what I was saying earlier like I thought that I was open and this and that not that you weren't up until that point but yeah. you were always very you know open with us always talking and sharing about your life your experiences but that day, I think you had hit this peak of something very sensitive yeah. that you hadn't officially faced yet mm -hmm. as much as you thought you did. Yeah. And I think that that was when you were finally able to process it. And kind of like I had mentioned, when you talk about these things, that's when it just starts pouring out of you. It's just like yeah. the power of speech somehow does that to us. Mm -hmm. And it makes it more real. And it lets you sit with it. But the only way out of that pain is just to get through it. Yeah. That's the only way. That's what yeah. I've learned. You can't bottle it up forever. Mm -hmm. And there is some shame attached to these painful experiences that we have. But the only way to overcome that shame is to just face it head on and really acknowledge it. And I think that regardless of who in our lives are contributing to that shame we hold it in because we love those people so much mm -hmm. um and we don't want to say this person made me feel this way and you know they contributed to this because ultimately we take responsibility for ourselves but we can't hide from the fact that experiences shape us mm -hmm. and i think that you love the people in your life so much but it was probably hard to kind of say out loud what took place at this point in time has deeply affected me throughout my whole life. Yeah. And it was coming to that realization and just speaking on it. I think you just kind of like cracked open. Yeah. But you needed that. Mm -hmm. And we all have that moment where we just crack wide open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a beautiful experience, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, it's moments like that that I think have changed me I just I look at people differently I have so much empathy for people whereas before I was just like why does this person act this way like, what's wrong with that person mm -hmm. you know not in like a judgmental way but I've always been very inquisitive yeah just curious right and I guess that kind of goes with us all being crown chakra yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. Oh, it's just all about looking at people for who they are and accepting them wholly. And I accept you wholly. I appreciate you. You're an amazing mm -hmm. person. So grateful for you. From day one, you've just been so open, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was something very evident. I was like, wow. I didn't have told you before. Profound. You, yeah. This man is profound. Yes. yes. 
And it's nice to see a man who is so in touch with his emotions. That is very hard to come by. And yeah, just our friendship, I will hold it very close to my heart forever. Uh, so thank you. Thank gosh. you for being you. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Okay. I know. <laughs> Deep breaths. Um, I'll share this because I feel like um, this, was, this is what came out of all that. Um, first off, thank you, Kim. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I love that you, you've told me this several times, is that, you, I, <laughs> you, that I'm, I'm profound. Yes. And I've never viewed myself that way. I've, I've always, like, run to the people who have more life experience and wisdom than I do. So to know that I'm giving off that persona and that experience to you, that lets me know I'm on the right path. So thank you so much. I appreciate of course. that. Um, it lets me know I'm walking in integrity and authenticity to myself. Yes. Um, the big thing that came out of that was when I went to my first ever personal development event, speaking of all this, um, I found it was, it was with Marsha Weeder. It was right before she moved to Rome. It was her last event in LA, a very powerful person. If you're listening to Marsha, hi. <laughs> um, I think she lives in, she lives in Peru or somewhere now. Oh, wow. So, um, Beautiful. anyway, at her last event, I found out that my purpose in life was to use my voice. And I took that very literally when I found out, and I started training in voiceover acting. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and I found out that through a long uh, journey of experiences that if I don't use my voice, if I don't share, then people miss out on the blessings. And so that has been, I I've, I've hold that very close to my heart, and I've lived that through everything that I do is to share so that people get the blessings that they need. Um, the other part, the big thing that came out of me being triggered that whole weekend on week seven for this teacher training uh, is I realized that um, I belong here, um, that I'm enough, and that I unite people and bring them together. Definitely. Um, and I, I feel agree. like that goes along with my purpose of using my voice. So um, thank you, Cammy, for thank you. allowing me to share that. Yeah. Thank you for using your voice yeah. and for giving me an example as to how I can use mine mm -hmm. because... Like I said, I want to help people. Yeah. Um, I've been saying that for over 10 years now. I just want to help people. Yeah. You know? I think we all do, right? And we have to figure yeah. out what that means. In, in How we're quality. going to deliver that. Right. And yeah. I remember like six years ago, I was speaking to a psychic. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, I see you doing public speaking. You're going to be speaking in front of huge crowds. And wow. she couldn't tell me what I was going to do. Wow. <laughs> but that always stuck with me. Wow. And... Kind of like when I saw the email about the teacher training back in November saying, do you want to work on your public speaking? I was like, oh my God, this yeah. is my door. That's your call. Yeah. This is it. Like, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. It's the first step. And yeah. as of right now, I don't feel complete, but that's okay. I'm, I'm excited because I'm just getting started. Yeah. And I'm just figuring out who I am at, you know, 27 years old. My life is just now beginning, and it's kind of a crazy thought <laughs> because a lot has happened to me. I've taken so many paths, and I think knowing that I can still start fresh is so comforting, and I mean, I don't know who's going to listen to this, but I hope that that kind of helps anybody that's feeling lost or stuck or like they're never going to find their path or place. I still don't think I've found my path, but I have the tools to get started now mm -hmm. and the people, mm -hmm. the community yeah, you have that have my resources. back. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't feel more full and fulfilled than I do right now in this moment. And that is just speaking volumes compared to where we were in January when I just felt lost and I guess sort of empty in a way. Mm -hmm. um, to that point, uh, I'll share this and we'll start to wind down a little bit more and we'll close here very powerfully. <laughs> um, I've had this conversation a lot with Eric. Eric, I hope you're listening, man. Shout out to Eric. Eric is so Eric. great. Um, we have a lot of great <laughs> conversations. And uh, for us, being part of the three guys yeah. that were a part of this cohort and, and, and dynamics have changed in this day and age um, I'm so grateful to have Jake and Eric to be a part of the brotherhood to come into this training because we were definitely outnumbered yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, I learned this. It was a difficult lesson, and um, I think it's something to acknowledge is that it is hard for us as men to not want to come and save women mm-hmm. when there is a call. And when I heard you say public speaking, that struck a chord with me. I was like, oh, I want to connect with Kimmy. I want to help her, and I want to teach her, and I want to be with her so that she knows she's not alone. But at the same time, I didn't want to be like, I, she doesn't need me. I don't need to be her savior. I don't need to do anything. Um, so it's nice to hear that I've affected you in a way where I really didn't do anything, but I'm doing everything. Oh, yeah, if majorly. That makes sense. Totally. So, um, to, to me, uh, it, it was it was just that. I was like, all I can do is I can just share. And if she picks it up and hears me, then she'll run with it. And you have. Yeah. And I, and I did. And it was perfect the way it was, right? Yes. Like we said, without really me even knowing anything. Um, so... When I heard you say public speaking, I was so excited because I'm like, I never thought of yoga as public speaking. And so you kind of gave me that perspective or that dynamic of like, oh, yeah, that's right. We are. We're DJs. We're public speakers. We're mm-hmm. communicators. We're healers. We're, yeah. we're we're guiding people to help them to get resources to be able to help themselves. So um, mm-hmm. I just thank you, Cammie, for teaching me of that perspective of like, we're also public speakers. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I think we were talking um, before, uh, or maybe it was Liz, but I heard, I saw this, I was listening to a podcast and I heard this person recently say, stop cueing, start communicating. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's, that hit me. That struck me. And, um, I think of you when you say that, because <laughs> I'm like, you never saw yourself as a public speaker. Never. And, yeah. and what did I say after your, your final? I was like, Kami, that sounded dreamy. That <laughs> whole experience was dreamy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's. I'm excited to see all the crowds that you're going to speak to and all the students oh that are waiting for you, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, wow. We can be here forever. Yes. Um, I'm sure there may be more episodes. I but, hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're always welcome back, Kami. I've really appreciated this. I ask this to all my guests, and um, I don't want to put you on the spot. And I don't think too hard about this, but just let it come naturally. Um, okay. Any final thoughts? For the listeners of the way you feel the nation out there, maybe it's a prayer, a Ooh. wish, a hope, a thought. What would you like to leave all the listeners with out there? Yes. Ooh. It's never too late mm-hmm. to find who you are, to find your community, to find what you love, to find your voice, and to find your power. Mm. Um, every day is a new start, and just show up for yourself. Do the thing that you once thought would be impossible. And you'll be, I think, pleasantly surprised with where you end up. And, yeah, just follow your heart, I guess. There you have it from the official (laughs) certified public speaking (laughs) yoga instructor herself, Kami. Kami, thank you so much. Kami, if people want to follow you in your journey, want to take your class, how how can they find you? How can they connect with you? Oh, um, I guess as of now, I'm on Instagram. So... You can follow me. My name's Cam Wen. It's K A M W E N N. Oh, there might be three N's. W E N N N. Or you can find me through Justin. There you go. We'll <laughs> Whatever ta- works. We'll tag it up for you. Don't yes. worry about it. Cammy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you this so much, Justin. Um, Love you so much. Thank you, thank thank you, you for thank the you. opportunity. You're welcome. Thanks, Wave. everyone, for listening. Way you feel a nation, tsunami healing. We are out of here until the next episode.